The term third world or third world countries was used in the 1950s to refer to poorer countries in Asia, Africa and Latin America which were developing, whose budgets were much smaller than those in the West and most importantly, they were politically not aligned. Their governments had no interest in joining the Cold War that was happening between the United States and the Soviet Union. In 1955, the Bandung Conference, which was held in Indonesia, announced the arrival of what were called the non-aligned countries. Now, this was a group of nations that was pioneered by Jawaharlal Nehru of India, Sukarno of Indonesia, and Gamal Abdel Nasser of Egypt. For the next few decades, for the duration of the Cold War, these countries did not take sides between Moscow and Washington, simply preferring to sit out the Cold War. Today, 60 years later, these same countries are central to answering the question, how robust is the global opposition to Russia's military operation in Ukraine? So far, we've seen a large number of countries that have publicly opposed the war. Some of them have even condemned Russia. But if you look closely, you will notice that most of these countries are in what is called the Global North, which is in the Northern Hemisphere, which is essentially the United States and its European partners. The Global South, which is countries in Asia, Africa and Latin America, have either not outright condemned this war or condoned Russia's actions or they have simply taken a neutral position and abstained. They have not gone with the West-imposed sanctions on Russia. On Crux Decode this week, we try to answer this central question. Does the Global South, do a bulk of the countries that are not aligned, secretly support Russia? As the war in Ukraine rages on, the Biden administration in the US has earned praise for building what is a multilateral coalition to push back against the Russian invasion. After all, this is one country going to war with another as an invasion of a sovereign country. Now that said, not every country in the world is on board with this US coalition. For example, America's own allies in the Middle East, notably countries like Saudi Arabia, the UAE and Qatar, have been reluctant to sanction Russia. In fact, the leaders of UAE and Saudi Arabia have repeatedly avoided getting on a phone call with US President Biden, despite the White House trying a number of occasions. India, a key member of the Quad Alliance, has refused to sanction Russia and in fact has stepped up the purchase of Russian oil. India is the only country in the four-member Quad, which has the United States, Australia and Japan, which has not sanctioned Russia. Three out of these four countries have imposed very serious sanctions on Russia. And that has led Joe Biden to call India a somewhat shaky ally. China, of course, has completely lambasted these sanctions. They have abstained on multiple occasions of the United Nations votes. They have firmly thrown their lot with the Russians on this one. Chinese firms have also signaled that they will continue to buy Russian products. So the question then is, has the West, and particularly the United States, failed in its bid to isolate Russia globally? Is there more secret support, if not tacit understanding, a certain looking the other way vis-a-vis -vis Russia that many more countries seem to have than the very vocal minority of Western countries that is of course led by the US and its European allies. Now many countries in the global south view this fight as one between great powers. It is not a fight in which they have a dog. They don't want to be squished when two giants collide. Many of them would rather prefer to sit this one out. After all, like I said at the top, the non-alignment movement and the memories of the Cold War are not too far away. Even back then, many countries, in fact, at one point of time, close to a hundred countries around the world, had preferred to be not aligned either with the United States or with the Soviet Union. So the question is, are we seeing a resurgence of non-alignment and countries wanting what is called strategic autonomy? So a couple of trends are very clearly visible. Number one, 
Many countries are going back to a non-aligned position. They don't want to get dragged in in this great power competition between Russia and the United States. Also, many countries are looking at very skeptically on this whole idea of democracy that's being imposed by the West. And of course, possibly as a fallout to this military operation in Ukraine, we could also begin to see more and more countries opt out of the dollar system and decide to settle trade in their local currencies. Now, if you were to look at the map of the world and divide them as countries that have sanctioned Russia and those that have not, there is a fascinating statistic that pops out. Only about 30 countries or just about 30 countries in the world have sanctioned Russia or joined the Western-led sanctions against Moscow. On the other side, more than 150 countries have not openly joined these sanctions. But that's not the only indicator. There is also a counter view that's being put out by Washington and by London. If you look at the United Nations General Assembly vote, 141 countries voted against Russia. 35 of them, including India and China, abstained. Only five countries backed Russia, and that includes the likes of Syria and North Korea. Which basically means that most of the world does not support the Russian war, but at the same time, the General Assembly resolution does not have any bite in it. So those countries, a large number of them, are okay going along with the popular view across the globe. Now, it could be argued that the UN General Assembly votes are one thing, they don't really have any legal sanctity or political or economic heft. Sanctions, on the other hand, are a more potent signal, a more potent weapon. It is true that not a lot of countries are applying these sanctions because they don't want to be seen as upsetting Russia. After all, any small country that is caught in the middle of two great powers has an incentive to sit on the sidelines, particularly if the war does not directly concern that smaller country. So what we have then is this, that most of the countries in the global south are agreeing with the sanctions, but they're not trying to circumvent the sanctions either. Now, India and China are prime examples of that. India has shown its willingness to buy Russian oil at discounted prices, even though it's just a small fraction of what India imports. But India is also going out of its way to highlight that the United States itself had said that oil transactions are exempt from these sanctions, which is why even today in Europe, for example, some of the biggest oil consuming nations, Germany, imports 40% of its oil and gas from Russia. In fact, in some of those European countries, oil and gas imports from Russia have increased since the beginning of this war. Even China's largest oil refiner, Sinopec, has said that it's going to curb its investments into Russia. It shows how even Russia's most dependable allies are wary of being caught in the sanctions web. But here is one thing that could change this narrative. The longer this war continues and the more grim pictures seem to be coming out of Ukraine, like for example the images uh, that were seen from places like Bucha, Irpin and Mariupol, the images of civilians being shot and sometimes they're shot with their hands tied behind their back. Some of them are blindfolded. And remember, the Russian side has contested some of these pictures, the authenticity of these pictures. No matter whether it is true or not, what it will do is it will force many neutral countries to pick a side against Russia. After all, no one wants to be seen as condoning war crimes.